Hi everybody, I hope you're staying well. Um, pimping your PDS. So here is a Skywatcher 130 PDS and it's a fantastic scope and straight out of the box it's a really capable imaging scope. But I think there are a few things on this which aren't as brilliant as I would like them. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great scope, it's really good. It's got a six inch mirror, it's got a 650 millimeter focal length, which gives you a good wide field of view, brilliant for nebula, um, fantastic just for as a general first scope, I would go for this one. I think it's brilliant and it gives you loads of room to grow. But I've changed a couple of things on this, which I think make it really good. The first thing I've changed, you get these with all Skywatch scopes, and these are the extension tubes that um, put your camera and your eyepieces in. And there are two, there's a two inch one and a one and a quarter inch one there. And the thing that's not so great about these is that the screws here cut in to your camera or into your eyepiece. So when you're using this for your eyepiece, these little screws cut in. So what is really good to do is to have a compression ring. So I've changed this one here to a two inch version, which if you loosen it, allows you to put in your camera properly with a compression ring around there. And that doesn't damage your camera. So this is just a locking screw. So it's all done with compression. And on this, you can see there, there's a nice brass compression ring in there so it doesn't damage the eyepiece. So this is much better and it doesn't damage any of your equipment. It's also built really solidly. So that's a really fantastic thing to have. Uh, the other thing which I've changed along the similar lines, on the actual telescope itself, if I just rock it over, you can see here, I've changed this part of the focuser so that it is able to use a compression ring. And this is an Astra Gadgets one. The original one, which is here, which just screws in, it had those horrible little thumb bolts there, which damage your camera. It has a proper compression ring in there now, which won't damage the camera when I put the camera inside, which is really good. So I'm really pleased about that. The next thing I've changed on this scope was to fit Bob's knobs on the secondary mirror in there. So now I've got three little adjustable knobs there instead of the Allen key grub screws, which were really difficult to adjust when you're collimating the scope. And with any Newtonian reflector, you've got to collimate your scope quite regularly, particularly if you move it and take it down and, and move it around. So I've now fitted Bob's knobs. Now, I did have Bob's knobs to do this end, but even though I checked with the astronomy shop where I bought them from, they're the wrong ones. And it does say they're for Skywatcher, but they don't fit. And after using these for a little while, I'm actually happy with those, so I'm going to return them to the shop and tell them that they're not the correct ones. Yeah, so they, I didn't fit Bob's knobs to this here. Now, when you change anything to do with the collimation on either mirrors, you've got to uh, recollimate the scope. And the first thing you have to do is actually check that your collimator is working. Now, I know there are lots of different ways of collimating. Um, so I have a, a laser collimator here, and this one I've had for about a year and I wanted to check if the laser was accurate or not. So I built a tiny little jig, which is basically three pieces of wood and a V cut into it there. And what you do is you sit the laser collimator in there with the beam going towards a small dot on a piece of paper at the other side of the room. And you rotate it round like this. And if you see the dot move in a circle as you're rotating round, it's not in collimation, you have to adjust this. Now, on my one, it's actually really well adjusted and the movement was so tiny that I was happy I was going to leave it. And also, um, this one, although it has the adjustment points, they've been filled in with what looks like silicon. So if I was to adjust this one, I would have to unpick the silicon which is on there. But I'm actually happy that this is really accurate 
So I'm going to leave that and not touch the silicon at all because that's properly calibrated and the silicon should hopefully stop it going out of calibration. The other thing which I fitted to this scope, which I fitted a while ago but I've not really had a chance to use in Angie yet, is a dew heater on this end where the big mirror is. I'm actually going to put a dew heater on the guide scope as well so that when it really gets dewy and cold at night um, I won't get any moisture building up on that particular scope as well. So the other thing I got for this scope was a coma corrector which will go into the focuser and then the camera will connect to that. Um, now I'm really looking forward to using that because it gives you really sharp round stars on the edge of the field of view from this particular telescope and that's really important but we've just gone into May and as you can see probably outside it's raining and it's horrible and it doesn't get dark until really late. It's probably for a few weeks but if I do get out and uh, get it set up uh, then I will definitely report back and let you see the images. In order to finish the collimation on this scope properly, although this is quite accurate and it gets the primary mirror and the secondary mirror really close to where they need to be, the only way to really check the collimation on this is to focus on a really bright star like um, Sirius for example or Vega and then defocus the scope so that you can see a kind of donut shape and the donut, the actual black bit in the middle of the donut, is the secondary mirror. You have to adjust the collimation on the primary mirror to make sure that that donut is two concentric circles and they're absolutely uh, even all the way across. And that's the only way you know that this particular type of telescope is properly collimated. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, it really helps, particularly giving a like because it highlights this video to other people and I'd be really grateful. So thanks ever so much for your support and uh, yeah, 
Take care, everyone, and stay safe.